Hey what is up guys, Klausnex here and today I want to talk about Jake Paul Shane Dawson documentary and I know what you're thinking, what Zach's talking about a trending topic? I am, and I am because I find it interesting and I don't typically do videos where I talk about trending things but lately I've been feeling like I put myself in a really small box when I only talk about health and fitness type things because there's other things I'm interested in so I might do that more often. And this really interests me because it's the subject of YouTube. When you have the biggest YouTubers right now, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, and there's someone investigating into their lives, that's interesting. Like, I know it's kind of dramatic, but like, it's very interesting to see what their, how their lives turned out as a result of this enormous explosion in popularity. Like, their, their rise to fame happens, like, it felt like it was overnight. How does that affect people who are in their early 20s? I don't even know if they were 20 by the time that they had all this fame, by the time that they were living on their own. Without the governing of parents, without the governing of anybody, it's just Jake Paul and Logan Paul doing their thing, running their own world. And obviously to keep this popularity momentum going, they had to keep being more and more and more controversial. And then they started getting really competitive and tried to one-up each other. And uh, I felt like I really related to that because I too have a brother that's really close in age. And I've grown up with him and I feel like we've been pretty competitive too. And with all the drama that happened between Jake and Logan Paul, you know, with like, uh, I don't want to really get into it super, super deep here, but with the conflict that happened between them, like that would rip apart any brotherhood. And I couldn't imagine what would happen if I had to lose that relationship with my brother because I feel like we're super close. And I felt like I really related to kind of the whole family scenario not that I grew up kind of with the exact same circumstances that Jake and Logan Paul did, but I did grow up in a household with a brother who was very close in age with me and we were competitive. And I had a dad who was like over the top masculine and a mom trying to keep up with it all. So I kind of felt like I related to this story kind of on a deeper level because I kind of had an understanding of the family dynamics. So I went into the series with kind of an open mind. Like, yeah, I was, I was a part of that Jake Paul, Logan Paul, hate bandwagon that everybody was on you know it was so easy to get involved and make judgment based on what the media is telling me what the clickbait is telling me what these little 30 second ads are telling me i was on that hate bandwagon and, I, and some people who i told that i was watching a series asked me why are you watching this i thought you hated those guys and i was like i did but after learning a little bit more about what went on when the cameras were off and like how all the pranks and stuff at the Team 10 house were faked and these were just characters these people were putting on, you know, for YouTube, but there's people behind those characters that were hurting and suffering inside. I felt like I did kind of relate to, well, just this whole thing in our society or, 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 or culture where men often suppress their feelings. I don't know if that's like a cultural thing or a biological thing, but it's very common. It's something that I deal with, something that most men deal with. And that's just not dealing with your emotions, not crying. I learned at a very young age that men don't cry. And I don't know, like you just look at Jake Paul and you could just see the pain behind his eyes. Like even, even before the series started, I could see the pain in his eyes. I don't know if that's because of my profession and I have to be really good at reading people. But even when he's in his whole hip hop persona, you can just see the pain in the eyes. I don't know what it is, it's the gateway to the soul. These guys and Jake in particular were just forced to live out this persona because the second you start talking about your feelings it's all of a sudden YouTube beef it's this whole new world it's this new world of media that um, there's no rules it's kind of the wild wasteland like YouTube's kind of cracking down on the boundaries now a little bit so we kind of have a bit of guidance but there's no real rules as to what's wrong and right all the all YouTubers are guided by their own morals and ethics and when people want to rise to fame it's very easy to detach yourself from those things so we get things like Jake Paul setting his pool on fire and we get Logan Paul in the suicide forest like that the suicide forest is by far the craziest thing that has ever happened to YouTube and not because of the series I feel like I have a greater appreciation for big youtubers and what they have to go through to get to their popularity and then how they have to change their lives and how they have to deal with that and there's no there's no rules there's no like psychology handbooks or therapy for YouTubers who rise to fame too fast and don't know how to deal with it because they're only 18 years old like you got to have a bit of sympathy for Jake Paul growing up with this with this competitive brother and all of a sudden things blow up faster than you can imagine now all of a sudden you're 19 years old and you have a house full of teenagers and it's just complete chaos and then people are stabbing people in the back and it's just super dramatic and it, it felt like a reality TV show but it wasn't really because it felt a little bit more authentic a little bit more raw it's just super brave of Jake Paul 
and Shane Dawson and everybody else involved to even go into this because these are super raw emotional things like things that Jake Paul did not want dug up things that he did not want to talk about things that he deliberately left out but uh, was open-minded to this so I just I learned a lot I went into it kind of skeptical and I came out feeling kind of sympathetic like I, I couldn't believe it you know and they kind of left it on a note where everyone got to say their piece except for Logan Paul so I feel like more is probably gonna come from this he's probably gonna have a reflection video and I do think that Shane Dawson did an awesome job with this series. I used to watch Shane Dawson's videos when I was in like junior high. Took a break because they got a little bit weird, but I, I really respected what he did. I think his editing was phenomenal. A little, a little too over the top with some of those dramatic horror movie effects. But like you can tell, this was like super emotionally draining for Shane Dawson. Like he's kind of a guy who has to deal with anxiety on a really high level. The fact that he went through with this, like people are calling him out for like, oh, you're just doing this for the money. But like Shane Dawson was having emotional breakdowns while putting this together. Like he put a lot of himself into it. He did a lot of sacrificing. So like you have to respect him. Not everything is about money. Sometimes people just pursue passions that they're, you know, passionate about. And the money is there because believe it or not, other people are interested too. And not only did he create this super interesting deep series that just generated so many different emotions in me and everyone else who watched it, but he pioneered this new path in YouTube. This is not something that has never been done before. No one has ever seen anything like this before on YouTube. It's super interesting. It, it opens so many doors. And I think this was also really good timing for this series because after the suicide forest and the rise of Jake and Logan Paul, it felt like YouTube was this kind of like the limit of potential kept going up and up and up. And then the suicide forest video happened and, and nobody knew what was going on. Nobody knew where the boundaries were anymore. Everyone realized that this is the line that you don't cross that has never been crossed. So it just kind of felt a little bit like the Wild West on YouTube and this video kind of pulls things together. Everyone kind of has an understanding. I think it just it just grounded the community a little bit. Even people like Jake Paul and Logan Paul can be held accountable for their actions. And like even Eminem had a manager that was telling him like when he was going too far. And Eminem would go pretty far, but there was still someone there telling him Hey, man, you shouldn't talk about assassinating the president. Jake Paul, Logan Paul, they don't have that voice. They don't have that manager that's telling them when it's too far. Because when you walk that line, that's where the views are. As a YouTuber, I try and keep my thumb on the pulse and I try and keep an understanding of what's going on, what's trending. Because it's good to know what doors are opening and it's also good to know what doors are closing. That's all I really wanted to talk about, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. It would really help me grow my channel. Classics out.